What's going on guys? Uh, today I'm going to make a little video because I was asked about it a few times and I know that for a lot of folks this is very basic information but you also have to remember that everybody started from somewhere and we all didn't know this at one time. So today we're going to be talking about and I'm going to show you guys how to swap out valve springs in your LS motor whether it be 48, 53, 60, 57, 62, I think they're all generally the same. Um, but we're going to be using a set of Cathedral Port heads off of a Gen 3, Gen 4-ish motor, whichever, doesn't really matter at this point. And we're going to be swapping out some valve springs. guys so we've got it kind of laid out here um, I've got an old junk head that I'm gonna be using to make this video I put the uh, springs back in it the valves and the springs first thing we're gonna talk about is the tool to do this you're gonna need some sort of a tool um, this one is a dual uh, spring remover as in dual as in uh, it does two at one time as opposed to they have some single ones um, these can be found on eBay or something else, you know, in different stores, relatively inexpensive. Um, I've seen guys like make stuff to do it, but really at the cost of this and how effective it is, I would rather buy one of these, use it, beat the hell out of it for a while. And if I have to, then go ahead and get another one. Um, <clears throat> the one thing that you'll notice is that the rockers are already removed um, and the head is removed. Now, a lot of folks when doing the valve swap are doing, you know, head gaskets, they're doing some other stuff as well. It is much, much easier to go ahead and do this with the heads off than it is with the heads on the motor. And there's a couple tip, tips and tricks, and I'll show you why um, throughout. But it can be done when the head is installed on the motor. The issue is just that you have to use compressed air in the spark plug hole to hold the valves up so they don't fall in and yada, yada, yada. Um, <clears throat> it can become a real pain in the butt, but that's why I always recommend that if you are going to do this and you can do it with the head off, it is way easier to do it with the head off. And uh, coming up, I'll show you why. All right, so I'm gonna jump right into it. Um, now, anybody who's doing this for the first time or who's never done it before, or even just general rule of thumb, um, you probably shouldn't be doing this with an impact gun, but this is a junk set of heads that I don't care about, and I've done this a few times already, so not saying it's still a good answer, but I'm just gonna do it with the impact gun for the purpose of making this video and it going along rather smoothly. So you've got the tool that bolts down with a spacer in between into where the rockers went. And you can see, you'll get this kind of lined up uh, as best you can. You know, it's got some back and forward and back movement so you can get it lined up. It's important to try to get it centered because that'll help the retainers come out easier and go back in easier, but I'm also gonna show you a trick for that. So once you've got it installed, go ahead and crank this down. Um, you don't have to crank it down all the way, this, that, and the other, uh, enough to get the retainers out. Now this is one important piece about why I say uh, having the heads off. Well, there's a couple things here. Number one, these retainers are these tiny little retainers, right? So if you drop those, it's gonna be a nightmare, especially if you drop them while this is on the motor. Also, you can reach underneath and you can push up on the valve a little bit if you need to, to gain some extra clearance or some movement. So, oh, let's see if I've got, sometimes these retainers are a pain. You can use a magnet, you can use your fingers, I was using some needle nose pliers the other day just to grab them with. But remove those retainers. Unbolt the tool.
and your springs are out. Now with like a, uh, if you're just doing a regular sw spring swap, like with a pack 1218 spring, you go ahead and take this lid off here and you're gonna reuse that on the pack 1218. So now we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of information about the valve and how it goes together. And then we're gonna do the reinstall going back in with these right here. So as you guys can see, there is the valve, right? This one has been removed. You see it's got that notch in there, bam, bam. And these are the retainers. Now the important thing about the retainers is they're cone shaped. So when you install them, you want to install them in the correct position. And what I mean by that is the smaller end goes down you guys can see that the smaller end goes down and the wider end is at top. If you look at the inside of the retainer, you will see that the inside of that retainer has a notch there. That notch is what grabs on to the valve and that's what holds it into place. When you've got the two of them together in that cone shape, skinnier at the bottom, wider at the top. You see, when you push up on this, now this is just one, not both of them, but you can see when you push up on this, I'm pushing up on it, which is the direction to be pushed by the spring, it doesn't go anywhere. That's how the valve is held into place. Now, like anything else in automotive, uh, coming apart is always easier than going back together. This one is definitely true in valve springs and retainers. But there's a couple little tricks I'm going to show you guys that should help along in the process. Part of that is having this lined up as best you can. So when you have the tool on there, go ahead and grab the spring. Try to make the spring centered, the valve inside the opening of the spring. Try to get that as centered as possible before you start cranking it down, or even while you start cranking it down. Now, as you can see, this one here is a little bit off center, so it might cause me some problem, but I can push on a spring a little bit to get it there. Now, to reinstall, it's the same process, but backwards. But this is why I say it's super important to do it with the heads off because this is gonna make your life a whole lot easier. When you've got the retainers, you can go ahead and get the retainers on the side of that valve where you feel them go into place and then push the valve down. Literally push the valve down, back into place. Because I'm telling you, once you do this a couple times, you'll realize getting it lined up and then loosening this back up and getting it all correct and sitting there is just going to be a pain in the ass but this helps tremendously if you can get these lined up and on there and then push down push that valve down and you're not going to be able to do this with this installed in the motor because in order to do that and the valve not fall in you have to have compressed air underneath here it's just hitting the table so it doesn't matter then i like to try to keep a hand on it because I'm using an impact. If you guys use like a regular wrench or something, this isn't gonna be anywhere near as bad with them jumping around, but with the impact, they're gonna jump around a bit. But as you can see, they're already falling into place lining up so I can run with the rest of it. And then remove the tool. Now, I'm not sure if you guys will be able to tell from this distance, but one of the things you wanna look for is that there's gonna be a little bit of a gap in the retainer where the two ends touch. It may not be on both sides, it may be on just one or the other, but uh, that gap is good. You want that there, that's okay, don't freak out about that. And then what I like to do, and even though it's probably highly not recommended, by everybody in the world. I don't know. But 
What I like to do to make sure they're seated, give them a little tap on top of the valve. You guys probably shouldn't hit it with a hammer, maybe like a rubber mallet or something. But like I said, these are junk heads just for informational purposes. But you'll see that's in. And you've now installed your valve springs on your LS. Do it all the rest of the way down. Um, and that's that. As far as very simple valve swaps go, or valve spring swaps. Uh, like I said, like this is most common with like a PAC 1218 if you're using like a sloppy stage two. Um, you know, it's got 585 lift and you need a spring that's good for, you know, the 1218s are good for 600 lift. Um, this can all be applied <clears throat> throughout any valve uh, spring sets that you swap out. And there may be some new parts and pieces, but you know, just replace as necessary. If you get a kit that has all the parts and pieces, this is the bare basics of how to swap the valve springs out. Thank you guys very much.